So the three things that I wanted to share with all of you this evening is to really talk about what physical stones or what stones are helpful when we have physical health concerns. And also, are there stones that are helpful if we have emotional health concerns? And then towards the end, I'm going to really tie into are they connected? Are they related to each other? And I'll kind of talk about that as I go throughout the workshop, but I'll really tie that back together towards the end. So getting started with the first question that I put out there, are there stones to help with physical health concerns? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. So I have this amazing book that I'll show you guys really quickly. I've showed it a couple of times, but it, this is what I refer to as my Bible. <laughs> and it's called the Book of Stones. And it is really amazing. I love the people who, who authored the book. I love their explanations of all of the stones and crystals. It's just so reading it is just so beautiful. I mean, every time that I find a new stone or I look into a new stone and I read what they've written, I'm like, oh, this is my new favorite stone. So I have a lot of favorite stones, <laughs> I, as I'm sure you all might have the same experience. And so really in, the, in this book, you can actually look up in the back, you can use physical ailments or emotional ailments to really understand and figure out what what would be most helpful for, for you. And what I really wanted to kind of express tonight is that they really are connected and they really are related to one another. So it doesn't, I don't want to say that it doesn't matter, but if you look up a physical health concern, there most likely is an emotional component to that physical health concern. And so either way that you look up what stone is really best for you right now or that could benefit your body and your mind and your spirit the most, it, it doesn't really matter if you look up the physical what's happening within your body physically or what's happening in your body emotionally because more than likely it is going to lead you to the same stones, to the same results. So there is also another book that I have been using and it's a book by Louise Hay, um, You Can Heal Your Life. And in here, there's pretty much every physical ailment that you can imagine. And when you look up the physical ailments of what's happening in your physical body, it gives you an explanation as to what is happening in your emotional body that is creating this physical manifestation. And when you, when you look that up, and you relate it back to this book of stones and you look up the emotional, the physical and the emotional components, most of the time it leads you to the same stones. It leads you to the same place. And so I just wanted to kind of give you guys a couple of examples of that. So one of my new favorite um, malas that I recently made is azurite and malachite. I don't know if you guys can get a good look at this, but this is such, I mean, I have so many favorites. Every time I make them all, I'm like, oh, this is my new favorite. <laughs> but this really, I mean, even just holding this, like it is really, it is, it's just so, you can just really feel the energy of this mala. And I kind of did a test with this just to kind of see if my what I was feeling was accurate. And so when I looked up the different components of azurite and what azurite really helps with, one of the big things that came up was migraines and headaches, severe headaches. So if, if you're experiencing that, then azurite is a great resource and a great tool for you. And the concept of that is that when you connect 
with the energy of Azurite. When you connect with that frequency, you can release whatever is happening within your body that's creating this migraine, this headache, right? And to really understand the emotional connection to migraines, that is connected to fear. And more specifically, the fear is really a fear of being invalidated and the fear of being invaluable. So if, if there is anything going on within you that is, is creating those feelings where you just don't feel like you have value, you don't feel like people validate anything that you're being, doing, saying, then more than likely you're going to experience severe headaches and migraines. And so when you look up migraines in this beautiful book I just showed you, the big stone that comes up is azurite. If you also go to the book and you look up invalidation and invaluable, the big stone that comes up is azurite. So again, it just really kind of goes to the point that I made earlier that whichever way that you choose to look at what's happening within your body, you are going to get led to the same stones. And so another stone that I wanted to talk about is, well, another actual physical health concern that I wanted to talk about. I picked a couple health concerns that um, are common that I've kind of been seeing a lot as people have been reaching out and asking me to make them some creations. And so one of the other ones is kidneys. And people who are experiencing issues with their kidneys, kidney function. And one of the biggest stones that is most beneficial for this is rhodonite. Rhodonite has also become one of my um, one of my new favorites, and it is it's such a cool stone. And I'll kind of get into why I love it so much in a little bit. But to really go to um, delve into the kidneys a little bit more, if you look at what is behind kidney function, what is behind why your kidneys could be giving you some issues and some concerns is that you are having this experience of feeling like a disappointment, feeling like you're a failure, feeling like everything that you've done in your life, like none of it has worked and, and it's all been a failure. And self-criticism. Now, I know that no one on here ever has self-criticism, right? Like no one criticizes themselves ever. No negative self-talk, right? So when we're experiencing those things, it is very possible that in our physical body, we could experience some type of physical pain or physical issue with our kidneys. Now, when you look that up, it will, it'll guide you toward rhodonite as a beneficial stone to help heal that. Now, if you go to the emotional component of rhodonite and what is helpful there, the biggest thing that comes up for rhodonite from an emotional aspect is self-worth. So if you feel like a disappointment, if you feel like a failure, if you have a lot of negative self-criticism, my guess is that your self-worth is non-existent, right? So again, those emotional ties, those emotional connections, those emotional wounds that lead you to having this physical issue they're really connected to one another. And again, it doesn't matter. I, I hate saying that it doesn't matter because it, I feel like I'm diminishing what's happening with anybody and, and that's not my intention. But whatever road you want to travel when you're 
choosing stones and crystals and and whatever feels better to you whether you want to go down the emotional road or the physical road it's it's really up to you to choose how you want to do that because it will definitely lead you to the same place it'll definitely lead you to similar stones and the biggest thing that i love about road and i excuse me is that it's definitely a stone of, of love of really big big juicy love and a lot of stones really focus on self-love a lot of the stones that are are big love stones rose quartz rhodochrosite stones that are really focused on love they're they're so infused with so much self-love self-healing so that we can really learn to step into our own self-love and rhodonite is definitely a big juicy love stone and it's a lot less focused on self-love and it's a lot more focused on outward love and it's really about allowing you to step into your full true gift of who you were born to be and to realize that and accept that and recognize that and see that that is your gift to the community to the world and that when you choose to step into that and you choose to outwardly give that you are outwardly expressing a really deep amount of love you're expressing a deep amount of love for your community and for the greater world that exists out there so road and i the fact that it's tied to feeling like a failure and disappointment and self-criticism and self-worth is that it really allows you to get into a space where those experiences, those emotional experiences are non-existent, almost non-existent, because you really have stepped into seeing your worth and seeing your value because you're choosing to share that value, to share that gift with the world. So Rhodonite is a very, very, if you have, if you believe that you have a gift to share with the world, if you believe that you have a message to give to the world and you want to do that, Rhodonite is definitely your stone, totally your stone. Because when you can connect with that, then all of those other things just fall away so that you can fully step in. So the next, so those, those are two stones that where I've really focused on that, the health concern. And, you know, I've obviously related them back to the emotional concern as well. And so moving into looking at a stone initially from an emotional health concern aspect, one of the health, emotional health concerns that I picked that I feel has been a really hot topic for my clients lately is forgiveness. Now, I know none of us on here have any issues with forgiveness and we've all completely forgiven ourselves and we've all forgiven everybody around us right like we we don't have any issues with forgiveness right well if you look at forgiveness if you really dive into forgiveness one of the there is probably six or seven good stones for forgiveness and the biggest one is chrysoprase and that i know this is gonna be hard to believe is my next newest favorite creation <laughs> i just made this yesterday and i freaking love it this is the beauty it is so oh it's so awesome it's so so it's so beautiful 
And chrysoprase is so, so I'm going to get into talking. I just love talking about it because it's so awesome. But I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But first, so chrysoprase really, like the idea of forgiveness and not just self-forgiveness, not just focusing inward on our own forgiveness, which is really important. It is very important that we are able to step into a space where we can truly forgive ourselves. And it also is really focused on forgiving others because, you know, no matter what, along our journey, somewhere along the line, I'm sure that someone has come into your world and you have just, you know, had some negative emotion around certain people, right? And to put it nicely, and when you can get to a place where you can truly offer forgiveness, it frees up so much of your life. And when you look at the physical aspect, when you look at what is happening physically in your body, one of the biggest things that is that chrysoprase is helpful for is heart disease. So how does heart disease and forgiveness tie into each other? Well, forgiveness is so tied to our heart, right? Forgiveness is so connected to, to our spirit, to everything that we are. And our heart is what is keeping us alive, right? I mean, we have all these other organs and all these other functions within our body that are really important. And I think that we can all agree that our heart really is the most important. It is really, truly the last thing that, that leaves our physical body when we transition out of here. And so through forgiveness, through accepting the idea of forgiveness, forgiving ourselves and forgiving other people, that is when we can truly heal our heart. And that is what leads to a lot of heart disease. You know, people talk a lot about, you know, broken heart syndrome and, you know, people truly passing and transitioning from a broken heart. Well, if you really de delve into that and dive deeper into that, a lot of that stems back and relates to forgiveness. How much anger, how much resentment is someone holding on to? And those things truly can only be released when we allow ourselves to step into a place of truly forgiving forgiving others and forgiving ourselves, right? And so when we connect, when we allow ourselves to connect with this beauty of a stone, right? It really allows for so much healing. And this, this stone, it really is the stone of the heart. It really is. It's completely connected to the heart chakra. It is green in color, of course. It's multiple, actually, multiple green colors. And it really, it vibrates at such a frequency that allows us to really step in and to really like be centered in our heart and to really connect within our own heart. And it offers a sense of courage when we are stepping into and handling difficult or threatening situations. And I think we can all agree that when we choose the path of forgiveness, that can be a difficult situation. We can be choosing a difficult path. It is not easy. And so really allowing yourself to connect with a stone like this when we choose to go down that road is really amazing and very beneficial. So now, just in the interest of time, I really want to get to talking about our physical and emotional health concerns connected and related to each other. 
obviously by now, I think that you all know that my answer to that question is a big fat yes. So I just want to really, really kind of hammer home this concept and this idea. And for me, this is what I believe completely. And I believe it because of many different books and articles and reviews that I read and also my own personal experience. As I said at the beginning of this call, I've been on my own healing journey for about two and a half years now, and I wholeheartedly believe in what I'm about to tell you, strictly based on my own personal experiences, and that is completely backed up by a lot of things that I've read. And so, this idea that what is happening within our physical bodies is really a, a manifestation of whatever is happening within our emotional body. And we may not even know what it is that's happening in our emotional body. We may not even be aware at all. And really what happens is Somewhere along the way, some emotional pain, trauma, situation, experience starts to come to the surface. Something triggers us, something happens that's creating this emotional response and an emotional reaction within, within our body, within our mind, within our soul. And our brain and our body are like, whoa, like we cannot handle this. We cannot process this for whatever reason. Maybe we are in a flight or fight position in our current life and we just don't have the mental capacity to deal with such a, tr a trauma, an emotional trauma at that moment. We just, we just, it's too much, it's too overwhelming, and we just can't do it. Maybe we haven't quite developed our emotional awareness to a place where we are emotionally available and prepared to deal with this. And so this is all happening within our subconscious. And subconsciously, our body just decides, like, this is not, this is not going to work. This is not going to go well. This, this can't come out in the emotional body. It's, it's, it's not ready. It's not prepared to handle this. So then that emotional pain, that emotional trigger manifests itself within our physical body because our physical body is a very strong and powerful being and our physical body can withstand the pain. Our physical body can handle the pain and we, our physical body, can heal whatever it is that's coming up for us much more solidly than what our emotional body is able to handle at that moment. One of the examples that I really want to talk about here that will maybe help kind of shed some light on what I just said is the example of PTSD. And I've had several conversations with people. Um, for those of you who don't know, I used to be an FBI agent in my former life. <laughs> I've worked for the FBI for 14 years. And recently, I have had several conversations with various military personnel who who have gotten out. They've either chosen to, to leave or they've retired. And, and we've talked at length about PTSD. And one of the fascinating things that happens is that, you know, a lot of these, and it's pr primarily been men that I've had these conversations with, and, and they, they really feel strong and they don't really understand what's happening because a lot of the trauma that they experienced was years past and then they make this decision to to leave for whatever reason or to retire and it's not really until that point when they're actually exiting completely where they begin to experience this trauma and the reason is because 
they're in it. They, they cannot afford to process any of the emotional trauma that they have experienced until they get to a place where they don't have to worry about looking over their back, where they don't have to worry about bullets flying at them or grenades being thrown into their camp or any of that. Like they're completely, I mean, talk about flight or fight, right? They are completely in the mode of survival mode when they are in and on, which when you are in the military, when you are in any position like that, law enforcement, anything, you are on, period. There is no like, oh, I work from eight to five and then I go home and have a peaceful life. Like that doesn't really exist. You are just, you're, you're on. It's a way of life. It's how you live your life every single day. And so the reason that PTSD is such an issue and such a great example of what we're talking about tonight is truly just that it, it really shows that our mind is such a powerful tool. Our mind, our body knows without us knowing, our body, our mind, our spirit knows what we can handle and what we can't handle. And so when we get to a place, when we get to a point where our body, our mind is like, okay, I'm going to start allowing some of this to come out. I'm going to start allowing you to process some of this. It's because our body is like, okay, you can handle it. You can get there. You can get through this. And so there are so many different tools out there. There are so many ways that we can choose to really create our own healing, to create our own healing journey, to create our own healing experience. And the use of crystals and stones is just another tool that we can add to our toolbox of healing. And so I just really, it was really important to me that I sh kind of wrap up with that and share all of that with you because I think it really highlights the idea that, that our body really is totally connected and there really can't be physical pain or physical health concerns without emotional health concerns and I think that's so important that we all just understand that the more open and willing we are to truly heal on every level so 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 important you you really can't go wrong right you can't like how could you possibly hurt yourself by healing emotionally healing your emotional body right like you you just can't go wrong with that so i'm going to stop there and i'm going to open it up i do have a couple of announcements that i want to make before we close out but before i do that i just want to open it up and see if anybody has any questions or any comments or anything that they want to share or say so i'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody and if anybody has anything does anyone have anything they want to share i do okay go ahead um i guess i've been doing a lot of therapy and they say that our physical bodies hold on to traumas we've experienced mm -hmm. so what can i do to help that yeah well, and I totally, totally agree. And thank you so much for sharing. And I think there are a lot of things that you can do to help that. And certainly crystal healing. I mean, there are so many amazing crystal healing things out there. Um, I, my friend, Chris Vondermaden, who sometimes does these workshops with me, he actually, one of his services, he actually offers crystal healing 
sessions for people. So that would be if you love crystals and you believe in their healing properties, that would be such an amazing experience for you. Thank um, you. And also, if you, if you love stones, if you love crystals, I would completely recommend and I would love to, you know, maybe have a separate conversation with you. And I'm happy to do some research and su suggest some specific stones for what exactly is going on for you. Because I, I do feel like that is really important. And that is why I do what I do the way that I do it. Because I think if, if you personally feel drawn to any of the things that I've created, I believe there is a reason for that. If you're like, oh my God, I, I got to have that. Like that is for me. There's a reason why you're feeling that. Your, your body is telling you you need that. And sometimes some people are like, I, I have no idea. I love them all. I want all of them. <laughs> and so that is really why I have the, the questionnaire that I have so that I can really get a sense for what is actually happening for you at this moment so that I can actually pick stones that are really going to benefit you. Yes, of course, they're going to be beautiful. And we all want that. And we want to be able to benefit from the healing properties of them. And so it's really important to me that I not only create something beautiful that everyone's going to awesome. love, but it's really important that I create something that I know is going to be beneficial. So I'm happy to have a conversation and you know suggest a couple of things and whether you choose to you know get a mala or a bracelet is totally up to you or go you know go to a local crystal shop and buy a raw crystal to just have in your room have in your home you know put it in your pocket and carry it around with you all the time thank you very much you're welcome mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything? I'm gonna look and see. Yes, Carmen, I love that. Um, and thank you for all the compliments. I love it. Um, so I just want to make a couple of in and out a couple of announcements before we sign off for the evening. Um, the first thing, I'm super excited. I am um, collaborating with a woman who is having a huge fundraising event at her home here to raise money for um, a handful of specific families in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. There's a local um, singer songwriter who she's connected to who has um, family, a lot of family in Puerto Rico. And so he's actually offering a free backyard concert, which is amazing. And in an effort to get a lot of people to this fundraiser to raise a lot of money to send down to these families. So I have offered to create a mala that I'm going to donate for the silent auction that she's having. And then also that event is on October 29th, and I'm also making 50 bracelets that are going to be the colors of the Puerto Rican flag, which, of course, are the same colors of the U.S. flag, red, white, and blue. So that bracelet's going to be made of red jade, blue jade, and then clear quartz. And I'm going to be selling them for $23 a piece and $3 from each bracelet that I sell is going to go to that, um, that fundraiser to add to my donation in addition to whatever the mala um, sells for. So that will definitely be available if anybody is interested in that. Um, and then... I also wanted to announce that I'm going to do another um, mala making workshop. 
So for anybody who's actually interested in making their own beautiful creation, I am going to be doing that. Um, I'm going to, I just did my first one and I it was very good learning. And so I am actually going to do it into two sections so that we don't spend four hours online. So the first section is going to be on November 12th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it'll just be, it'll be short. It'll be around like 30, maybe 35 minutes at the most. And then you're going to have a week to knot all of your beads. So you're going to have to make 108 knots. And I'm going to show you how to do that, of course. And then the second part will be on November 19th, again at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that one will probably be around 60 minutes and so you'll come to that with all of your all of your beads knotted um, and then we'll finish making the mala so you'll put on the guru bead and you'll put on the tassel and you'll put on all the finishing touches and so that'll be about an hour and then you'll have your own you will have created your own beautiful creation so and I just want to say, since you all are on here live with me, if anybody is interested in that, let's definitely talk more about that because I have my very, very special love event coming up and I will be away from October 31st until probably November uh, November 8th, I'm going to say. So for anybody who's interested in that, I'm going to have to have everyone registered before October 29th because I'm going to be completely out of commission <laughs> for like 10 or 12 days so that I can be totally focused on all the beautiful ladies that are coming to love with me. So, and I will have all of that information in an email. So if anybody is in interested in doing that, you'll be able to get that in an email. Um, and then I just also wanted to quickly announce that my next free online workshop will be on Wednesday, October 25th, so two weeks from tonight. And in that workshop, I'm gonna be talking about can you mix malas, bracelets, and essential oils? and how you might want to go about doing that and then are there good oils to match with particular beads so I'm really going to be talking and combining um, essential oils and the beads together with each other mm, cool so yeah so does anybody have anything else that they have a question or that they want to share before we sign up, Patty? I, I do. This is Amanda Maria, and I have a question. My question mm -hmm. is, when I, 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 I haven't purchased the mala yet, but I want to. Okay. And so I look at them online, and I see all these pretty malas. What is the best? I mean, do you choose one based on, wow, that looks really pretty, or do they all just look shiny and pretty, or... <laughs> Is there a, because sometimes I look at some of them and I'm like, ah, I wouldn't want that one. And then I look at others and then I'll, I'll like read the description and say, ah, that, that doesn't really fit me, but I'm really drawn to the mala. So what is mm -hmm. your advice when you're looking to choose one? So that's a fabulous question. So thank you for asking. So I would say, well, first of all, there is no wrong, right or wrong way. So, you know, really whatever speaks to you, whatever feels right, that's, that is the right answer, really. And um, I'm not sure if I sent you my email or not, but you can, first of all, they are all beautiful and bright and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, if you go on my Facebook page or my Instagram account, you can see pretty much everything that I've made so far. Um, and if any of those things really speak to you, if any of those creations are like, oh, yeah, that's the one, I am more than happy to 
you know, make that and design it specifically for you. And if you are feeling like I just don't really know because I want them all, I totally get that. Um, That's me. Yeah. (laughs) Then what I would suggest to you, if you're willing to trust me, I would suggest to you that you fill out my questionnaire. Okay. And by doing that, and I just ask people to be um, as thorough and specific and detailed as they're willing to be with me. I am the only one who sees your answers and information. And based on that, I use the books, the books that I showed you, this book and this book. Uh And I, I really research what is happening for you right now and what it is that you're wanting to focus on and what you're wanting to create. And I use all of that and these books to really feel into what the best stone would be for you right now. And that does take a level of trust because obviously if you're like, I, one of my dear friends did that and she was like, I just hope she doesn't pick this one. I just hope she, there was one in particular out of all of them that she really didn't want. And that's the one I picked. (laughs) So if that's how you're feeling, then you might want to share with me that you're totally open, except you don't want that one. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. That was very helpful. I'll probably fill out the questionnaire and then, um, see what comes up because I am at the space where everything looks great and everything looks shiny and new and I wouldn't mind having them all. (laughs) (laughs) I totally get that. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. If I haven't sent you the questionnaire in the email of the recording that I'm going to be sending out to everybody um, later this evening, there will be a link in there to that questionnaire. So you'll have that. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I have a quick question. Mm Mm-hmm. I was just wondering, uh, the workshops, the Mala workshops, are you going to be recording those? Yes. The Mala making workshop. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I actually, um, We'll be recording it in several different pieces. I think there will be six or seven short videos together. Um, And then I put them all together in an email for you and then send it to you so that you can basically just save that email. And then, and I also give you the ability to record on your computer as we do the workshop. So if you would rather do that so that it's just on your computer and you have it, then you can do that. Um, But you then will always have it so that if you want to make more in the future, then, you know, if you, if you totally got everything except for making the tassel, because that is probably the most challenging, um, then you'll be able to just go straight to that, you know, four minute recording and just watch that. You won't have to sit through the whole thing or figure out okay. where. And the whole thing. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, this is very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. I you're think welcome. so too. I've never done one of these before. So I, I, I'm grateful and I feel like a, a newbie. So I appreciate all your information and your excitement as well. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you for being here. I love that. Yay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for joining me live. And I definitely look forward to more Wednesday evenings with all of you. So thank hopefully you. I'll be seeing thank you all you. soon. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.